Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Magebane. <clears throat> the Kingdom of Evernfelds is the last bastion of magic in the world, cut off from the outside by the Great Barrier through which magic cannot penetrate. For centuries the Mage Lords have ruled their kingdom with an iron hand, while beyond the barrier both magic and the mage lords have faded into an almost forgotten myth, replaced by low-level technology. Now all of that is about to change, for one man, Lord Falk, the Minister of Public Safety, the most powerful of the mage lords, has plans to assassinate the king and his heir to break down the barrier and conquer the lands beyond. <clears throat> All it will take is the lives of two innocents, Prince Carl and Falk's own ward, a girl named Brenna, a small sacrifice to the Lord's way of thinking. One is the heir, and the other is the legendary Magebane, the anathema to all magic. But there is one thing Lord Falk hasn't foreseen, one, <clears throat> one thing that couldn't unbalance all of his plans the unexpected arrival of a young man whose airship suddenly comes sailing over atop the Great Barrier. Okay. <clears throat> now I should say that I freaking love this book. There are, there are great twists and turns throughout the story. There are plenty of great, you know, there are great characters. Lord Falk and another character, Mother Northwind. And there's the you know, of course, there's the guy in the airship named Anton <clears throat> and Brenna. You know, they all bounce each other off very well, but, you know, let's talk about the story first, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, all the characters were very interesting. The, there was lots of great drama. But, uh, you know, let's get back to the story. Basically, like, <clears throat> a little under eight centuries prior to the book, there was uh, the Kingdom of Evernfelds, and, you know, everything's all going hunky-dory, everyone's happy except for the commoners who are being ruled by the iron-fisted mage lords, and eventually there's, um, there comes the birth, there comes the rebellion, and at the head of this rebellion is the Magebane, the wielder of anti-magic, and... <clears throat> You know, the, t the titled Mage Bane. And, um, like, whenever anybody, like, threw a spell at the sky, they would just, he would just wind up with the spell being flinged back at them, you know? <clears throat> Bas uh, basically, um, yeah, anyway, um, I should probably go back even further. I, they said, and, like, the reason why they, um, and the reason why the Mage Born you know, feel they can do this because there's something about a sky mage or something. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> was I? oh, anyway, um, anyway, there's this huge rebellion, you know, and eventually the last 12 most, most powerful mage lords, plus a few others and any commoners that were just unlucky enough to get caught in the middle was um, they just built up this massive force field which and teleported them like across the planet to this new area and you know like it said here you know the they everyone pretty much just forgot about it they pretty much just started thinking oh this is probably just some you know advanced technology that was mistaken for magic and <clears throat> And they just went on and advanced themselves and so forth and, and building their own civilization. But we, meanwhile, like, and sending out colonies. But meanwhile, um, <clears throat> in the kingdom, there's uh, pretty much continued going along the same path. There's still the Common Cause faction, which is still kind of rebelling against the Mage Lords. And there's also this sub-faction that the mage lords called the Unbound, who want to take down the barrier so they can 
Oh yeah, like fast forward to present day. There's the Unbound, um, the Common Cause faction, who are still kicking as far as inside the barrier is concerned, and um, then there's the Unbound, who are these mage lords that kind of are saying that we're not being hard enough on the commoners, and they want to be even harder on them. Then there's the different characters, you know. There's Lord Falk and the Mother Northwind, and they have their own agendas, and there's lots of politics and drama going around. It's it's freaking great. And, um, you know, um, especially, like, how they just sort of use the people around them. And, um, but, uh, <clears throat> And uh, what the what thing that I want to talk about is the magic, the the magic that is used in this is kind of interesting in my opinion. You know, you have the hard magic, which is the standard you know throwing lightning bolts and fireballs, magic missiles, and so forth. And then you have the soft magic, which consists of healing and reading minds. And then there's like enchanted weapons of different varieties <clears throat> and, um, and of course there's the common theme which is located in all kind of stuff like this which is of course the natural theme of magic versus technology though it's not really quite as overt as in most other no, most of the other stories <clears throat> You know, and I thought that was really good as well. And, um, I can't say enough good things about this, but, um, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's an interesting world. I give it five out of five. I thought it was a great and is a really interesting world. The magic was cool. The characters are interesting <clears throat> and, and sympathetic, or some are interesting, some are sympathetic, but, you know. And I felt it was just a very well-written, well, well-told well story. You know, highly recommend. Go check it out. Great. I loved it. Just go. Anyway, um, till next time, see you later and have a nice day.